In case you didn't know, SPX options are soon going to have five expirations per week, giving us short-term traders more opportunity to make high probability trades. And in this video, I'm sharing my time series analysis chart that I'm developing for trading SPX zero DTE credit spreads and how I used it to book over 50% of the max profit of a recent call credit spread in about 20 minutes using this method. Check the description if you're interested on how to get the updated time series analysis charts each week. And we're starting right now. So let's look at the time series analysis chart first, and then I'm gonna show you how I used it. And what this is, is basically a five minute increment chart. And I'm looking at uh, the net or general movement of SPX on a Monday in five minute increments going the past few weeks. I'm working on the algorithm for special weighting and duration and all that. But in general, what I'm looking for here is when do the biggest moves take place during the day? And we can see that over the last few weeks, you know, and I update this every week and I'm gonna be sending this over to my Patreon members, but I update this every week so it will change over time. So it's, it's sort of dynamic each week. But in general, for this particular trade, the market kind of opens up and kind of pulled back. And then there's this little bit of a bullish move. But the real big move here is from the late morning. And you know, I don't wanna to get too specific with exact times because that can be deceiving. But in general, the big move is sort of a late morning turn down into an early afternoon sort of pullback. So that's the move that I'm really targeting. I'm not gonna to try to target every single one of these moves because this isn't exactly what the market is going to do. Uh, the market can do different things. For example, when you see here in the beginning, it shows that the first few minutes of the day, the market's actually up a few points. Well, in the example, you're gonna see that the market actually gapped down. And so we don't wanna look at this as like exact science, like this is exactly what the market's gonna do. But in general, what I'm looking to do is see if I can find a good shorting opportunity and potentially go long here for zero DT SPX credit spreads. We're basically trying to establish a directional bias. Now, the other thing I'll look at is what is the sort of magnitude of these moves? So for example, the average move is around 10 o'clock. We got to move from, you know, let's call this one up to about 12. So this, this is about a 10 point move, a 10 point surge in the morning. So that's something else I'm factoring in is what are the magnitude of the moves? So a 10 point move, but this move is the bigger one, right? We went from 12 points, SPX points, down to negative 12. So let's call this about a 25 point move. That's the move that I wanna to try to capture. And I'm gonna to try to capture that to the short side. So let's look what the market did this morning. In the morning, the market actually gapped down. This is the first candle of the day. And you know, similar to what the chart was showing that there was a little bit of choppiness and a little downward movement. And then we got this push higher. Now this push higher actually happened a little bit earlier in the day and probably has to do with a little bit of a snapback. But if you, if you think about this, about 10 o'clock, the market rallied from about 42.15 back up to 42.55. So this is about a 40 point move. So if I scroll back up, remember I'm looking for a move up to potentially short. This move was, you know, uh, let's call it 10 points, 12 points. Um, and then it rolled over, but it didn't roll over till about 11. So this was happening a lot sooner. So at this point though, since I've got the mini pullback and then I've got the sort of push, I'm looking at key levels to trade off of. So 42.50, 42.55 is sort of one of those round quarter strikes and that lined up with the gap down. This is the gap window. So at about, uh, what was it, 10.35, I sold a 42.55, 42.60, call credit spread, a CCS, for about 235. And the idea here was that if the market did push higher, I could, you know, if we got the gap fill, I could actually add on and, and enter a second one, which I didn't have to do because the market actually turned. But we did get the pullback after the surge up. So after selling it for 235, I got a, let's call this a 20, you know, the 25 point move down and I took profits, I was able to buy it back for $1.35. This happened all in about 20 minutes. It was, a, it was a very quick trade. And again, I think the volatility had picked up because we had that gap down. So, so these moves can happen a lot faster. And if we go back to the rest of the day, this is what the chart looked like. So again, here was the gap down. We got the move back up and we rolled over and then eventually found a bottom. In this case, the bottom was found a little bit earlier than the time series chart, and that's okay. The time series chart 
had the low and move higher at about one. So everything was happening a little bit sooner. The, the, the volatility, I think, causes that. But in, you know, net net, when you look, com uh, compare that to the actual chart, it actually played out pretty well. You got a little pullback, you got that move higher, you got the early morning pullback, and then the, you know, kind of lunchtime hour move to the upside. Now this was, this move was exacerbated. I wish I could say that I, I sold put spreads here or even here and made money. I didn't. I actually, I actually just took the call spread. But this is how I'm using the time series analysis uh, algorithm to help me sort of pinpoint uh, trades that get a general idea, and then I can look at key levels and other potential, you know, uh, re support resistances for to to trade off both up and downside. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one.